So we're at the 41 acres on Pete, um, and we're getting ready to set our well pump. Um, the well was just drilled last week. We've got a well that's about 240 feet deep. The casing extends about 173 feet, and we're getting approximately uh, 60 gallons plus per minute of yield out of that well. So we've chosen, because we're gonna be doing some irrigation, because we've got lines that are running long distance, and we're probably gonna be using a lot of water for animals, washing vehicles, uh, things like that, we've chosen a pump that will output about 18 gallons per minute. We're not gonna drop this pump 240 feet deep. We're actually not even gonna drop the pump itself beyond about 150 feet, and we're gonna keep it within the casing. Uh, we get down below that and the well driller, so I'm a, I'm a plumber, but the well driller had recommended keeping it in the casing just to keep sediment out of the pump and keep the pump in better condition. So this is a one and a half horsepower Franklin. It's an all stainless steel uh, pump and motor. Uh, motor being down here, pump being up here. And then we always, I always add an additional check valve to, um, to ensure that just in case the check valve within the pump, because it does have an integral in it, just in case that fails, I've got a secondary. And these are known to fail, even though Franklin is a great pump, uh, they will fail on you and you'll be pulling a pump and you'll be kicking yourself in the butt for just not adding this extra $30 part here. Okay. You'll notice that we've got electrical tape that's UL rated all the way across here. We've got our heat shrink kit, and we did leave a little bit of slack right here before we set this pump because what the, where this wire goes is all the way down to the motor here, and there's actually a plug connector right inside of here. And if you pull on these wires too tight, you will actually disconnect, and again, you'll be pulling your pump. Okay. Uh, then we use a barb fitting. I always put two to three hose clamps on mine. I try to use long shoulder barbs uh, when we do that. And then you can see I go past my heat shrinks, which are right about here, and I'll continue the electrical tape um, just to get onto the wire itself. And then right here, we've got a wire guard. Uh, because of the yield of this pump and the pressures that we're gonna be running, we're gonna be using an inch and a quarter pipe. Uh, we've got really long distances at the 41 acres here, and we're going to have runs of, of yard hydrants probably a thousand feet away from the actual wellhead. So the larger the pipe, the less pressure drop, the less head loss, and the better the yield gallons per minute at your longer distances. Um, we'll come over here, and we've got an industrial pressure switch uh, made by Square D. And this is a 230 volt, or I believe 120 volt setup. And if you look in the side, inside of your pressure switch, you'll find the wiring information and basically your line load information. This guy right here is an 8100 pressure switch, which is an industrial pressure switch. We're gonna adjust it to be probably about the 80 side. I'll probably just bring it down from the 100 because that's just asking for trouble. We've got our boiler drain here, uh, which is really a hose connection, quarter turn. We got our tank tee, which is a one inch tank tee. Pressure gauge, little brass nipple to connect our, our um, actual um, uh, pressure switch to. This is actually the boiler drain port for a half inch boiler drain or a relief valve. Depending on your code in your area, you may need to put a relief valve on your system, and that may even need to be piped outside of wherever uh, you set this tank indoors. Today, because we're using this for agricultural use, and because this is a temporary setup, we're going to be setting this tank up outside right next to the well, and we're actually going to be running it with that DeWalt generator right over there, which has an 8,000 uh, watt generator. Uh, 10,000 surge, and it's got a 30 amp L1430R receptacle on it, which is a 230 volt receptacle to be able to run this 230 volt pump. Um, you may or may not need a grounding rod, and that unit may or may not need to be grounded. It just depends on how this generator uh, lights this setup. So we'll find that out here shortly. All right, so we're here at the wellhead. Um, we had to kind of trim the top of this and I'll kind of show you here. It's a little bit uh, jagged for a well seal and that's not gonna make a good well seal. So we've, we've cut it nice and straight. You can kind of see the cut there, cut along here. 
and we're getting ready to drop our well pump in. All the wires basically been installed along the uh, entire thing. And you can see the wire guards. Uh, we've got a few of them in place just to keep the pump off. You can see one right here. Keeps the pump off the well um, casing itself. And it also protects the wire from getting kind of gouged. So we've put a few on here um, as we go. And you're just going to see how we kind of drop this well pump down. Um, there are some tools you can use. And uh, one of them is basically it's a, it, it bolts onto the side of this casing. And it's got two roller wheels. And that kind of helps uh, if you're kind of by yourself and you can't really steady it. You don't want to nick this wire on the side of the casing as you're dropping it down. So we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. How deep is this well? It's 240 foot deep and the casing go, uh, goes down about 173 feet. We're dropping the pump at about 150 feet. That way we keep it within the casing and we keep the sediment down. Uh, the yield on this well, well is about 60 gallons per minute and this particular pump at 150 foot deep should give us about 18 gallons per minute. And what size pump is it? It's a one and a half horsepower Franklin Electric all stainless steel. And it's a, um, it's a model 15 is what it is. Uh, the all stainless steel models can only be purchased at a professional well drillers store. Um, we used uh, Drillers, drillers Inc. Uh, locally uh, to purchase all this stuff. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Mm -hmm. Driller service. And we've already hit water. Our static water level down there is probably about 30 foot from the ground. You can hear those goats yelling in the background. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we're actually going to be, I've already shocked this well. Um, which is basically a chlorine that we put down the well casing. And this should straighten out as soon as we get some weight on that. Uh, when that pump starts pumping, this, uh, this pump will get real heavy and it'll straighten this out. And uh, you'll see, we'll, we'll go ahead and tighten these bolts up and we'll get everything kind of prepped up and uh, we'll speed up to that next part. Okay, so we finished up dropping the well pump down. We've installed what's called a cycle stop valve right here. The cycle stop valve, you can find more information by just doing a Google search about cycle stop valves, but it's a really cool valve. Um, what it does is it leaves the pump running while you're using the water instead of the pressure switch cycling on and off when you hit your high and low pressure points. Um, it's gonna basically keep the flow of water directly in the middle of your two pressure points. So in this instance, we've installed an 8100 pressure switch, which is an industrial switch right here. Okay, and this is all temporary setup right now, um, just to get us some water out of the homestead. Okay, the 41 acres. So this switch will cut on at 80 PSI, and it will cut off at 100. I've got this cycle stop valve set up to about 85 to 90 PSI, which means that when we turn the water on, and we've got a generator set up over here, um, but when we turn the water on, this guy is gonna drop, that pressure switch is gonna drop below 80 PSI, and then it's gonna kick the pump on, and then that pressure switch you're gonna see, or the pressure gauge you're gonna see go up to about 85-ish PSI, and we're gonna flow as long as a hose is running. Now, if we turn off the hose, you'll see the pressure gauge go all the way up to about 100 PSI, and then it'll cut off. So, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for really good pressure out here. This guy right here is a sampling valve. Um, you can see a little bit of water come out there. This is for the health department to do a sampling of the water coming out of your well directly at the source. And you can see there's no threads because our local health department requires that there's no hose threads on this guy. 
Okay, so we've purchased a valve that's basically set up to be a sampling valve. We've got our vent here, our well seal, our wire port, and an inch and a quarter T with a bushing in it going down to this three quarter. Cycle stop valve before pressure switch, one inch discharge out of here. And then we've set up a boiler drain off the side here. We got our pressure gauge with a boiler drain here to go ahead and run our hose. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on right now. Um, and we're gonna show you, we did do a test in a five gallon bucket and I'll show that real quick. I'll show you how to kind of um, measure how many GPM you're getting. Um, and we'll show you that result in just a minute. Um, I'm gonna start the generator right now. And you can see the pressure gauge is already at 100. I've got my hose off right now, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my hose on, and it's, uh, it's right by us here, so here comes the hose, okay? And if you watch the pressure gauge, it's turned on, and we're maintaining a good pressure of around 85 PSI, like I mentioned, okay? And you can see how much water's coming out of this guy, um, and we're gonna do the bucket test right now, so let's go ahead and do that. Five-gallon bucket, and here we go. And stop. So about 18 seconds, five gallons in 18 seconds. We're running about probably 17, 18 gallons a minute out of this well. Pretty darn good. And uh, that's about all we got.